Hey everyone, welcome back to the Beamer Barn. Today we're working on my 335i wagon and specifically we need to finish up with the rear wheel drive conversion because although we have all the drivetrain components swapped over, we still have some wiring issues that are causing some faults on the dashboard. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So after scanning the car, the faults that I have that I'm mostly worried about, and you can ignore like the steering angle sensor because it just needs to be coded, but it's these three no message from DSC sensors. And I believe that they're in relation to like longitudinal dynamic management, which it also has a fault for. Uh, and so these three faults here are going to be from the pitch and yaw sensor, which is right underneath the seat here. And then the other fault is going to be for the front right axle wheel speed sensor. So it says direction of rotation. I don't know if I just got the direction wrong. We can go ahead and test it by, you know, getting the car in the air and, you know, trying to spin the wheel. But I think it might be like a continuity thing. So we'll just need to check the harness on that. But let's go ahead now and get to the parts car and pull the parts off that we're going to need to retrofit in here. So here inside of my parts car with the front seat removed, which was already disconnected and also the speaker cover here and then I'm pulling up the carpet. Got to get some foam out of the way here, undo a couple of bolts, and then this is what we were hunting for. It's got a six pin connector with four wires going into it, so I'm pretty sure this is what we're looking for. And it says sensor cluster on there. So this is going to be like pitch and yaw sensor for the you know DSC module to help the car with traction control. And uh, I believe that the connector is different so i'm just going to leave this here for a moment we're going to go back into the wagon do the same procedure and i think confirm that the sensor connectors are different and then we'll probably have to cut off the pigtail here bring it inside the house and wire it in So here it is, the DXC sensor module component right here. And you'll see that the connector has four pins, whereas the one from a traditional rear wheel drive car has six. And another problem that we're gonna run into is that all four of these wires have to go to the module. But for the DXC cars, these four wires here, one of them is just a ground and goes to a chassis ground. So one wire we're gonna have to splice and route underneath the carpet through the firewall and to the DSC module so that we have proper communication to this new module here. And then hopefully that'll eliminate those codes. So I've actually taken a really close look at the diagrams here. And basically what I was worrying about with the ground wire, uh, you know, basically being grounded to chassis. I'm wondering if instead of grounding the sensor to the DME if we can just ground it to chassis instead and uh, I don't think that the sorry the DSC module is going to be able to tell if it has an open ground wire and I don't think the sensor will care if a ground is a ground so we're going to go ahead and just try to repin uh, this harness right here and then we can go ahead and you know test the uh, faults and see if they come up if they do we can always you know add the ground in but I think that the easiest solution here is just to use the ground that's on here repin the wires into my new connector for the new sensor supply and then we'll test it out So now as you saw, we've got our test configuration of the wiring done and the new DSC sensor supply all hooked up. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to clear the fault memory with the car turned on and we'll see if those faults come immediately back because they were hard faults before, of course. Eventually. All right, so now we've got the moment of truth. Let's see what kind of codes we've got. All right. So we still got those codes that we need to 
code the steering angle sensor and code for the wheel speed sensor but it looks like no more codes for the dsc you know longitudinal i think i think that's no actually sorry it says the ldm is incorrect probably needs to be coded calibration required so that looks like a separate problem from the pitch and yaw sensor for the uh dsc module but at least we've got those three codes out and now the only thing i think that we really should worry about is the front right wheel speed sensor so i just want to check the wiring on that and see you know if the pin popped out if i didn't get it in there all the way so let's go ahead and investigate that now and for those of you guys doing the rear wheel drive conversion at home here's a really clear look at the wiring diagram so this is going to be for just about all rear wheel drive cars this is the wiring schematic for the dsc sensor module that we just did and here is the dxc car so how all the dxc cars are wired the you know lines that go off to the junction box they're all the same so you don't need to worry about that but really it's transferring the pins in the correct order from this connector to this one or sorry from this one to that one but i hope that helps you out i'm gonna go ahead and reassemble my car like this and like i said let's go ahead and figure out this wheel speed sensor fault now Well, I think I solved my problem. Turns out that I had the wires crossed for the positive and negative, you know, the ground and the supply for the wheel speed sensor. So I just went ahead and swapped those two wires around on the harness itself up here. So it's 100% OEM. And now we can go ahead and reassemble it and then clear the codes and see if that fault comes back. And hopefully we can test drive the car in a second and have no fault codes. So just like before, we cleared the faults and now we're gonna go ahead and see what new faults we have. So from the DSC module, looks like we need to do the steering angle sensor adjustment. We have a brake pad wear sensor in the rear, which I know is, I think, I think it's the brake pad sensor itself. And again, the steering angle sensor. So I think that we should just try to code the steering angle sensor or calibrate it. Now to code the steering angle sensor, it kind of goes through the DSC module. So we're gonna go ahead and navigate to NCS Expert and that is gonna help us out today. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the ECU, the DSC unit. And we're just gonna do a coding and that's just going to code the DSC module with the factory options that are in the vehicle order of the car. It says coding ended. So let's go ahead and close this and go back to ISTA. And we are gonna try Try one last time to code this steering angle sensor now that it's been well coded we're gonna adjust it now that it's been coded to the car hopefully and uh, if it works great if it doesn't then we might have to replace a steering angle sensor chassis steering angle sensor adjustment and let's try it hopefully it works this time all right says so steering angle sensor matching and it says adjustment was successful and I don't see any ABS lights oh boy have we done it folks all right, let's go ahead and start up this car. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at that. And for some reason, oh, that's right. The brake light is on because I have bad brake pad sensor. The seatbelt light is on, I think because of the seatbelt. Yep, because of the seatbelt. And then the TPMS light on, which, hmm, I forgot what that was. Let's go ahead and see what's on with that right, that, right now. The TPMS, you know, I don't see any faults here. Uh, communication fault, LDM, brake pad wear sensor. These are all the faults from before, but I don't see anything for the TPMS in here. And you know what's scanning the car again? We don't have any communication to a TPMS module. I think it, you know, it should communicate, it should show up there. So this might be a question of this car not having been equipped with TPMS and the car now looking for it. So I should just code it out. And honestly, I would be opposed to that. But it looks like the last of the codes that we have wheel torque brake set point requests going to well you know receiver the ldm so it looks like we need to code the ldm actually i could probably do that with ncs expert and the other faults are for the frm because i know that we have a uh, right high sensor you know that's not connected in the front and uh, also the adaptive headlight fault which i know that we have but look at that we've gone to a much shorter list of faults now no more short circuits everywhere and i think that we're ready to take the car for a test drive without all these lights on the dashboard all right here we go hopefully no lights come on <laughs> and as you can already see the only light that we do have left is the brake light 
I did code out the TPMS. You know, I ran the VIN on this wagon here and it never came equipped with the TPMS system. So that was really easy. I just had to code the DSC module and then the instrument cluster to tell the car that it didn't have any tire pressure monitors or anything like that. So that was easy. And now you can see that we have no DSC faults, no OBS faults as well. And really i was really looking forward to that i mean it was so annoying all those faults before you see we still have an active headlight fault uh, i do want to test out the cruise control so we're going to go ahead and do that now because i'm worried that i don't know why it's looking for the longitudinal dynamics module i think that's for active cruise control cars let's go ahead and try this it says cruise control fail okay so it looks like we might need to do a little more coding because I don't think that we have an LDM on this car, but we did have one on the 335 and I'm not so worried about it for active cruise control. I don't think it's a very important feature. So we don't need that module to get the cruise control working, but we do need to do a little bit more coding. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and read up and we'll probably do another episode where we do some more coding options and let me know if you guys wanna see like another top five or top 10 coding options list and we'll do some cool modifications on this wagon. So that's gonna conclude our video for today and I hope that it found its way to some of you guys that are doing the all wheel drive to rear wheel drive swap because it's as simple as a couple of wiring changes as well as you know the hard work of actually getting the full drive train swapped over but you don't have to be super wiring or electrically inclined to be able to do this modification and get your car to have a rear wheel drive transmission and everything included with it. So I hope that this encourages you guys and we're very close to being done on this wagon build. I've got more mods that we're gonna do, but a little more service as well. We're gonna go ahead and take care of the turbos coming up. We're gonna get some replacement cartridges. It's gonna save us a little bit of time and effort rather than rebuilding them or going to upgraded turbos. And then we'll probably end up doing the oil pan gasket and I'm thinking also the rod bearings as well. So stay tuned for more episodes on this build. We've got a lot more work to do. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like or a comment down below and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you haven't yet. As always, I hope everyone has an amazing day and we'll see you next time.